example problem, an inclined circular gate with water on one side. So we have here your water on this side, shown in the figure. So we'll be terming the total resultant force. So we're looking here our FR only, which is acting beneath the center of the gravity. So we have here your circular gate, which is one meter, and it is submerged from the surface. So we have here the surface. So we have here your uh, surface. So that is so we have your surface, which is. Uh, which is 2 meter from the surface is 2 meter submerged the gate is submerged 2 meters from the surface of the water and the wall of the of this dam or let's say this is the gate is inclined at an angle of 60 degrees now referring again to our figure pre uh, previously so from the centroid so what we have here is the distance which is fc so that is the uh, vertical distance from the surface of water to the centroid of our submerged object and we have your hc which is the distance now for the resultant force uh, so that will be uh, that is beneath it is located beneath the centroid of our submerged object so i'm gonna draw here somewhere here assumingly and this is also became our this also is our center pressure at this point we have your cp as your center pressure and this is our fr acting on this uh, um, location from the beneath from the center of the gravity and this vertical distance of our soda so that would be HP then I draw the corresponding uh, uh, parallel uh, parallel distance of our YC from the centroid to this projected line from the origin which is uh, your O here and also the YP where your resultant force is being located now from the problem we're looking now at the total resultant force so I'm going to bring down here the equation of our uh, total resultant force that will be the atmospheric pressure plus the density gravity we have your HC location now, then it is multiplied by the area surface area of the, our gate so in the problem here it does not state uh, if the atmospheric pressure is uh, it does not state atmospheric pressure since it is exposed to atmospheric pressure so since, since it is already this is already a dam or some um, some type of um, what it, uh, a canal okay. so we're going to include that one so our usually we have your atmospheric pressure which is that will be visible that will be 101.325 so that will be TPA to be given and also the problem uh, is stated also we're using take note we're using only water here so we are using a water for our some means of uh, dividing the the dam uh, submerging the object here we are only using the water here so there will be the density will be the same so that is 1000 kilogram per cubic meter and we have the gravity which is 9.81 so we need to determine now the value of your hc so let's draw a triangle here again so drawing our triangle here, so we have a triangle here acting, so we have an opposite triangle here, so referring on this one, so we have your 60 degrees, so it will be an opposite of this one also, we have your 60 degrees, and we have your HC here, and we have your YC, 
so we have your sine of 60 degrees that will be equal to your opposite so we have your hc and we have your y uh, hypotenuse which is your yc to get the value of your lc so that will be sine of 60 degrees times your yc then substituting that one to our equations so we have your fr here that will be multiplied by we have your atmospheric pressure so that will be 101 point so let's uh, express this one in thousands so we have here one one pound one oh one three two five so that will be newton per square meter since the unit of power pressure is pascal so that will, if you're going to break down that unit that will be newton per square meter that will be force over area per square area then plus our density since we're using the water so the density of the water is 1000 constant density uh, 1000 kilogram per cubic meter then it will be multiplied by g which is our g is 9.81 meter per second squared then we're going to multiply it again to hc which is sine of 60 degrees okay sine of 60 degrees times your value of your yc since we do not know what is the value of your yc so we have to find out so since our yc is the, from the center and we have here one meter and this is submerged on two meters so we need to find um first thing first the distance of this one so we're going to use again the trigonometric functions here since it is a triangle so i'm going to draw a triangle here again so i have here your triangle so now it's the same also for this one it is also 60 degrees then we have your um two meter and our hypotenuse that will be our call this um so this is below so we have here the distance so i'm gonna name this one since it's not yc so this is i'm gonna name this one as an x okay x here so we have sine of 60 degrees so that is equal to um that will be opposite that is two meters then we have your x to get the value of your x that will be sine of 60 degrees time um, so this is uh, sorry this is will be become two meter divided by the sine of 60 degrees then the value of our x here is equal to or let's try to combine it in one equation so i'm going to use this whole equation okay, okay so observing from the diagram we have the look the location of your, the value of your yc so the yc is equal to the distance x that will be two meter divided by your sine of 60 degrees then plus the half value of our one meter that will be 0 0.5 meter okay so substituting that one in our equations we have now we multiply two two meter divided by sine of 60 degrees then it is plus 0 0.5 meter okay so our fr now our fr so we have that will be 1000 uh, 100325 that will be newton per square meter then plus the value of this one using your calculator so we forgot to attach here the diameter so i'm gonna add that one i oh, sorry the area so i'm gonna write here that will be multiplied by the area a so this is now the value of this one that will be so we have the value of uh, this is 23,867 uh, 0.85 so the unit is kilogram meter squared so that would be Newton okay so this is Newton already so uh, check, checking out the units here, we have the Newton unit here, taking note of that one. 
then it will be multiplied by meter so it will be the the cubic meter will be cancelled out meaning it will be squared here okay so i have here the room square meter then multiply by the area now the area it will be pi over 4 then it will be multiplied by the diameter since our diameter is 1 meter we will be using that one is equal to the same as 1 okay then fr fr now we have your answer as so we have the answer of 98,000 so it will be 98,326.23 it will be now a force which is cancelled out this one will be our area so we have the newton units for this one so let's box our answer here I'm gonna highlight that one and this is uh, can be expressed as also in terms of kilonewton. So it would be. So we can express this one. Our uh, our solution. It can be now. This will be ninety eight point three two six. This is now kilonewton. Now, if the problem does not again, I will bring this one again to remind you that if the problem does not state the atmospheric pressure, so in here I just only consider the atmospheric pressure. Now, if our P sub O or the atmospheric pressure is zero or does not, thus the problem does not state the atmospheric pressure, our FR now will be using the 23,000, so it will be multiplied now by your area. So this is only the value here, which is our FR is equal to our fr is equal now to 18745.76 so that's this will be newton and let's say this is now your 18.746 will be kilo newton so this is the value if and only if uh, the problem does not state take note of that one the atmospheric pressure so I just want to show here, since here usually we don't uh, have the atmospheric pressure here to, uh, stated in the problem, I just only consider this one just to show you the calculation, so take note of that one, if that if the, uh, atmospheric pressure is not being mentioned in the problem, so we, can, we will not include it in our solution, so our answer will be the 18,000.